Hello? Hello, everyone. Come in and have a seat. Hello, everyone. I'm just going to take my mask down while I speak because first I hate the thing, and secondly, oh, are we recording this? Yes. Oh, I love my mask. <laughs> Uh, we do have masks and hand sanitizer in the back if anyone wants it. Uh, but first of all, welcome to the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce's program on agritourism. And let me say, this is part of the Chamber's Economic Development Initiative. You know, the Chamber is literally an award-winning economic development entity, and we look forward to working with each and every one of you as we push forward the new economy in the Merrimack Valley as we're all struggling through this COVID impact. And I want to say thank you to the Economic Development Directors and the Padres and Andover and Rocky Andover here. Give them a round of applause. Welcome. <laughs> and also I want to say thank you to our aide from uh, Representative Lindy Campbell's office. She's fantastic. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> and all the way from Plymouth to see the real God's country, the Merrimack Valley. <laughs> State Representative, welcome, Mr. Representative. <laughs> And let me tell you one thing that I think is so important. When you have a state official, in the old days, they always would say, come to my office in Boston, we can talk to you. But when you have a state official coming to Merrimack Valley at 8 a.m. on a cold morning, what does that tell you? Absolutely. It tells you that they really care about what we're trying to do up here. So, you know, thank you so much. And let me tell you that we've had her at a couple of our chamber programs. She's been fantastic. She always says, says to us, what do you want me to do? What can I do to help you? Do you need me? It's never, I don't know, I'm not sure. Let me check my schedule, I can't come. And this is an example of that. Michael's gonna introduce her and Michael Smolik after in a moment as well. Let me tell you a little bit about what we're trying to do. And I'll turn it over to Michael. Um, the Chamber has developed a number of new initiatives in tourism and hospitality. There's one, Anne Marie from North of Boston, give her a round of applause, the CBB. When we try to work alongside of the CBB, we are not by any means trying to replace it. We work alongside with support because obviously that's the entity established um, along the state lines to promote travel and tourism and hospitality. And we've seen a dramatic drop in the Merrimack Valley. You know, in our business, I've always said that our business people, our visitors, when they're done with their business meeting, and we see the dramatic drop because people simply aren't coming into their offices. Businesses are closed, many businesses are not reopened. And that's hurting us. So we've tried to think about some other ideas. What can we do outdoors so people feel more comfortable? And what better place than a farm? So we've started talking to, to Mike Smollett about the um, idea of an agritourism program in hospitality. He's going to tell you about the visitors that they, they, they obtain, that they have on a regular basis. By the way, I just want you to know that this is the first hybrid event being held by the Merrimack Valley Chamber in its history since 1888. Thanks to Ray Ann. We're not only doing this live, but we're also, I call it simulcast, for lack of a better word, but you're actually going to be able to see this, you'll be able to record, it's going to be on YouTube and all kinds of social media programs, and that's an example of what we're trying to do because this is the new novel, unfortunately. So let me introduce Michael Nevelacher, he's, he's, he's the uh, coordinator of the Chamber's Economic Development Programs. Yes, he is related, as you can anticipate, but he coordinates the Economic Development Programs for the Chamber uh, in, in a wide wooden program it truly is and we want to say thank you to him and he's going to introduce um Kate, who's going to be our keynote speaker and then we'll introduce mike smaller and we'll do questions afterwards and again we hope there's some opportunities for discussion good morning um i just want to first off uh, before i get started i just want to say thank ryan from uh, state representative linda dean campbell's office for joining us today uh, I believe she'll be joining us soon as well. Um, but before you go on, I just want to say again, thank you to Mike Smolak and Smolak Farms for helping coordinate this program for hosting us here today. It's such a great place to be, and I'll talk more about that in a second. But with that being said, I want to thank um, Kiko Matsudo RL, who is the Executive Director of Mass Office of Travel and Tourism, for joining us today. Um, when we told her about this program, she said, I definitely want to be part of it, and uh, she does such a great job this day talking about um, people coming to places like this. 
and we want to say thank you. So with that being said, I want to introduce our keynote speaker, Pico Matsunara. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, good morning, and thank you, Van, for making the adjustments. I was trying to uh, determine how we would be able to address folks. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to come to Small Life Farm to show your support for agritourism. My name is Keiko Matsuda Oral. I'm the Executive Director for the Office of Travel and Tourism um, for the state, and I was appointed by Governor Baker about a year and a half ago. We have the, I have the undisputed privilege of being one to champion the wonderful places across the state. And with my background, um, I feel like we have a win for agriculture and a win for tourism because when I was at the state house, um, I served as a state representative and at the state house really um, was, uh, agriculture was near and dear to my heart. I'm glad to see that Brad Mitchell was Farm Bureau was here. And um, so, when I stepped into the role of tourism, it's a natural synergy to say, absolutely, we want to support um, the efforts of agritourism. Tell you a little bit about myself. I, it, we drove up from Plymouth County, my husband, Norman Oral, and, um, and I, we drove up from Plymouth County. It took about an hour and a half, hour and 15 minutes, um, no traffic, it was, it was a great ride. And we pulled in and I'm like, this, is amazing. <laughs> Small Act Farm has, has been on my list. Um, so I was in the legislature for, for four terms. It's been on my list of places to visit. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a legend in, in, the, in the area and across the state. So pulling in, we, I mean, it, it's, a, it, it's an amazing just to like come in off of, you know, off the main route. And um, my husband immediately went to check out all the, the tractors on, on the side. Um, because, uh, in my, in my world, um, I grew up in the city, so I didn't grow up with this. I married into the farming family. My husband is the farming family. My husband is the one who's like gravitating towards the tractor and is eating all this and he's just <laughs> loving it. Um, I married in 30 years ago and, and, um, and I'm, I, I love it and I've grown to love it. And uh, we have a, a small, smallish farm um, in, in our area and, and we've done a short stint at butternut squash farming. Um, but we totally respect the work of farmers, understand the importance of, um, of local food sources and, and food security and having the preservation of the land. So we first off want to appreciate, thank and appreciate all the work that you do here at the farm, you and your family. Uh, I know there are a number of family members that, that work the farm as well. So first off, I want to uh, thank you for that. Joe is, is much too, um, <laughs> he's much too demure. We, uh, we have a, he's been a great, great advocate for this region. Um, he's been um, really uh, one of the first, first friends in, in this area um, that I, I have met and he's been a real champion. I want to thank him for this opportunity uh, to really highlight and showcase uh, this, this region, the Greater Merrimack Valley, north of Boston. I'm joined by my colleagues in tourism, and I can't say enough about them. They have been um, just really strong, strong advocates throughout this whole time period, and just a support network. Um, Anne Marie from north of Boston is, um, has been is the chair of the regional tourism councils for the state. And there are 16 of those across the state um, established by statute. And so she, she and Nancy Gardella from Martha's Vineyard serve as the chair of, of that, that group. And, um, and she's here to give away. Um, yes, and, uh, and then we have um, Tom Fitzmorris and he's with the Greater Merrimack Valley. Um, another, another one who is just really trying to promote our state as, as a destination and as a place that people can really come, enjoy, and make memories. And last but not, not, certainly not least, um, from my office, from the Office of Travel and Tourism State Agency, uh, Phyllis Cahaley is our regional tourism council coordinator and is the longest serving um, uh, agency employee. And she's, um, she's been a great, great person to work with. 
So I'm giving you the faces and the names because that's what and why I'm here. Because we, as your state, or Phyllis and I, as your state government and, and the rep and, um, and Representative Campbell's office, and um, we're, we're here as your allies, as your advocates, as your, um, we're supposed to be working for you and we are working for you. And so that's the emphasis is to say, how can we help? Uh, Joe had mentioned, you know, that, you know, that I'm always, I'm always willing to, to try to say, you know, what, what is it that, how can we help? And so one of the things that, um, and I think that that's, that's where we are as, um, as an administration, I think the Secretary Keneally, um, Lieutenant Governor Toledo, Governor Baker, we're trying to make it through this crazy pandemic. We're trying to figure out the safest way through and how we can help. One of the ways that we have figured out to, to help with the economic impact of this pandemic is a campaign that was launched about three weeks ago. It's called My Local MA, and Joe has it printed out on the, on the back there. Um, it's findmylocalma.com, My Local MA. So you think, wow, that's good. My Local MA. What does that mean? That means that your local businesses are hurting. In each one of your main streets, those places need your business. And so with the campaign three weeks ago, we launched with the tagline, put your money where your heart is, right here in Massachusetts. And we're trying to get the word out to a statewide marketing campaign, and we haven't done one in several years, but we're trying to get the word out that buying local matters now more than ever. For months, people have been sitting on their couches, on their phones, scrolling through, and purchasing, no, no offense, purchasing on Amazon. Um, we, I'm not, again, it's, you know, Amazon is here and, and it, is, it is here, but, but we need to help our local businesses. So we need to take that extra step to get out of our houses and um, go to our local hardware stores, go to our, um, to our local uh, farms, the thing with agritourism that makes it so, so fun, when I was thinking about, uh, you know, what type of venue this was, and I had, I had visions of what Small Act Farms was, I think it met all of the visions um, in that uh, it's, it's a place where memories are made. And every fall, growing up um, with, with my kids growing up, we would do the, the agritourism types of events, the apple picking, the pumpkin picking, the corn mazes, um, those types of things. My kids are grown now. Those are the memories that I cherish. And those are the things that I feel like you're not only in the food production business, you're not only in um, the employment category, or you know, you're, you're, you're in the memory making business and you're in the, the destination, um, you know, so many, I, you know, I've seen that there's weddings that are held here. It's like, you, we need to support places like this more than ever. And there are over 400 farms across the Commonwealth that, are, that do some form of agritourism. We need to help those farms stay in business. We need to be um, listening to what some of the concerns are and hearing and acting and changing and moving. With the campaign, the My Local MA campaign, there was a little bit of a, of a ripple with the rollout as there always is with the marketing campaign. Um, but the good thing about this administration is that they're hearing, they're listening. We, I, as an agency director, I'm adapting, we're evolving, we're, we're, we're pivoting throughout this time period. We've gotten through so many times where it's like, oh, I can either panic, I can panic and like, uh, you know, just try to figure out what the next, you know, just panic and, and freeze, or I can pivot. And so 
what I feel like as an agency I'm committed to doing is we're committed to not panicking because the tourism industry is devastated, is devastated. Um, we are, our lodging numbers <laughs> as we were are thinking, um, but, but it's, it's tough. Um, the, the tourism industry has been hit very hard. Hotels, restaurants, um, attractions, we're, we're in a really, really tough time. Uh, I believe that we need to think of it without panicking, and we need to pivot. We need to pivot to the opportunities. We need to remember that places like this um, matter, and that we will make it through. And that's where, for hundreds, over 100 years, your family's been here, over 100 years. Um, my, my husband's family is, is five generations in, in the area that he's in. Many of you are from families with, with long-standing, long roots, deep roots here in Massachusetts. We're going to make it. We just have to stick together, work together. That's why I called out my friends. My friends in tourism who we're figuring it out, we're adapting, we're, we're pivoting. It's, it's, it's collaborations that didn't exist and, and haven't been as strong, but are getting stronger. Working with the Chambers of Commerce. Joe has been a stalwart. He works with tourism. He's setting the model. He's giving, he's giving the, the model for, for what we need to do to move forward. And it's, it's collaborative and it's, it's about working together. So um, I want to thank you again for just the opportunity, first of all, to be here. I hope that I get a very small tour of the farm. Um, what one thing that you can do, because I like to leave people with an action step. What can you do? Um, you know, this is this is live on web, you know on on <laughs> Facebook, but Zoom and recording. And Zoom and recording. So. Um, shout out to all those that are, that are watching. Um, I like to leave with an action step. And one thing that you can do for your local businesses, because we are such a mobile technical um, society and everybody's on their phones, is support these people on social. Go and like their page. Go and follow them. Give them the thumbs up. Give them the support that they need. Share their posts. Um, I think that those are the small things that you think, well, it doesn't really matter. They got, you know, they got 20,000 followers. It doesn't matter if they have one more. It does. It does. So I, I really believe that we can, each one of us can, can take away is, um, supporting these people on social media, on finding out what their Twitter feed is, finding out what their, uh, Instagram is. We have a wonderful, wonderful opportunity because this is a, a wonderful state. And so if you think about the places in your region that you want to remain, that you're, you're supporting, that you're, you know, your, your boutique down, down uh, on Main Street, all of those places, they all need your support, your love. Please put your money where your heart is. My local MA, findmylocalma.com, is about supporting um, Massachusetts residents, supporting Massachusetts business. Each one of them has a story to tell. I'm going to pass the microphone back to. Um, I'm going to pass the microphone back, and we're going to hear more about the wonderful Small Act Farm. So thanks again, Joe, for this opportunity. Thank you. And on behalf of the Merrimack Valley Chamber, we'd like to thank you. All right, now look at me. One, two, three. Thank you. I'm so sorry, Ryan. I'm not done. I'm not done. Yeah. Let's have one more thing. Um, so Brad Mitchell is in the back, and um, I would be remiss. I am. I'm on the. Um, Massachusetts Commission to Study Agritourism. We 
are committed. The legislature formed this commission. It's led by Matt Department of Agriculture, John uh, Commissioner LeBeau, and we have been tasked with studying ways to really make a difference. And it's the first of its kind. We've had two meetings, and we, we're committed. Um, Senator um, Representative Kulik was uh, a champion in agriculture, and he retired after this past session, and it was one of his last bills that moved forward. And, um, and we're committed to trying to, to find ways to support agritourism. We, we're really working on it. So again, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I want to thank uh, Kiko uh, for taking the time. Again, I mean, I understand you to come meet with us here today and for her leadership in the, in the tourism industry right here in Massachusetts. So thank you again, Kiko. We appreciate it. Um, with that being said, I just want to uh, talk about our next speaker, Mike Smolak. Uh, I talked to so many people this morning that said they've never been here before and they're amazed at all they have to offer. And it really is amazing that Smolak Farms has what, have, what they have to offer here. And we're very fortunate to have them right here in the Merrimack Valley, right here in Massachusetts, because during these COVID times, a place like Smolak Farm becomes more important than ever. Um, and we're hearing about so many families that are able to, instead of staying home, instead of being stuck in a house, they able to come up here and they're able to apple pick. They're able to pick their own pumpkin. They're able to have the great cider donuts. I think I think you heard you say over 500,000 made a year. Um, get Christmas trees. I mean, there is something for everybody at Smolak Farms and we're very lucky that Mike Smolak and, and is able to offer this to us right here in the Merrimack Valley. So I could keep talking all day about Smolak Farms. I could talk to you about the uh, the uh, scones they have, the cider donuts that they have all the time, but I'm gonna pass it off to Mike Smolak who, is going to uh, be our next speaker. So thank you again, Mike. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. And yes, I'm going to make sure just to, just to let you know, my local MA worked very, very well this past weekend. And if I look a little bit bleary today, that's probably because it was quite an intense weekend. But I'd like to thank everybody who is here because without all of you and your support, none of us would be here. Um, and uh, my family is uh, you know, eternally grateful to all of you for being as supportive in many, many different ways and, uh, and, 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 and in very different functions. When I came back here in 1974, full time from Penn, there were 36 agricultural properties in North Andover, and, and now there are maybe three or four, none in Andover. Uh, Metro Boston has uh, expanded and gobbled up all these uh, farm properties and they've become housing developments. And, I think that's a little bit sad, but um, back in 1983, we made a commitment to um, preserve this farm through the uh, Mass Department of Agriculture's API program. And uh, and you know, uh, you know, in fun reflection, might have not have been the smartest thing I did financially. Um, but on the other hand, look what we're sitting in the middle of. And um, and there's actually no question over time that it was exactly the right thing to do because because this thing will be here. In perpetuity, I, I will be here for a, a quite a few more years, but we'll see how long that lasts. But um, ag tourism has been very popular in Europe for quite a long time, and uh, when I've traveled, um, it's been kind of interesting because uh, inevitably there's a there's a trip out to a farm, and I thought, well, this is something that we certainly can do here uh, because I don't see a whole lot of it uh, being done yet, and we've been in touch with a few tour groups and. We've caught their interest, and that's something we're thinking about. But you know, when you think about today's society and people, um, what do what do people want? I mean, you know, a lot of society is you know, texting and Facebook and plastic. And one of the things that 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 we seem to sort of forget is uh, feeling real. And there's nothing more real than coming out to a farm like this. And and you know, as others have said, people people come here, and and you just see the delight on people's faces. <clears throat> and um, and again, people, uh, uh, you know, I'm getting to the point where it's the third generation that I've seen coming back to this farm, and um, that that's a little bit humbling because that means I'm I'm getting a little bit older, and that's oh, that's okay too. That happens, but um, but this this farm has uh, grown over the years, and it, it used to be the history of it. My grandparents bought it in 1927 for five thousand dollars for 160 acres, and um, all the manure on the premises. That's what the, uh, the bill of sale said. So, so, so it's kind of interesting. It was fertilizer, it was an economic commodity back then. But, um, 
But you know, in, in, in terms, I'd say probably our earliest foray into, into some sort of tourism is um, my sister, my sister Eileen and I, way back in 1985, changed from um, what we had done, which was just basically wholesale, to, to starting the farm stand. And they planted uh, 300 apple trees. And my mother said, what are you going to do with all those apples? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, I figured it would work its way out. So what we did, <clears throat> we opened the farm stand and then we started educational tours because we, we, we felt the children were being not too connected to the to land. And um, we started, I think, with maybe four to 600 kids that year. And you know, until this current year, we were having about, about 12 to 13,000 kids that would come out here for, for a one hour tour. And that's, that's pretty amazing because certainly it was marketing, certainly it was tourism. I kind of did it uh, just to get people interested in bringing the parents back and, and, and apparently it's worked because we seem to be awfully busy with uh, people coming back. And, you know, it, it's kind of funny, one of, my, one of my tractor drivers who's passed on was in a, was in a uh, grocery store in the rest of Oxford. <laughs> and this little kid came up to him and said, hey Billy, Hey, what are you, and, and the kid looked, looked at him, what are you doing? Oh, you were my tractor driver at the farm. So, it, it, you know, the, the amount of draw from Metropolitan Boston has been, has been amazing. But, um, you know, talking about what we do here, we've got uh, all kinds of things going on. Um, um, but one of the things that I, that I always strive to do is something a little bit different, somebody get somebody's interest. Say, for example, I think um, our heirloom apple orchard, I planted it probably about 15 years before people got interested in early apples. And so now, now people are calling all the time about coming to get an early apple, coming to get a pink pearl when you bite into it, um, the inside of its pink and, you know, just the wonder on people's eyes is, is pretty amazing. Um, one, of the, um, one of the marketing strategies um, that, that we've been using um, during, this, during, the, during this COVID period because, you know, we certainly have been, been very, very careful about monitoring it and how we're going to handle all these people. And, and, and actually, it worked fairly well this past week. And people generally have been pretty respectful. They wait in line. And, and it's, by and large, they're doing, they're, they're doing pretty well with this. But um, one of the things that I did as a marketing strategy, as I said, come out to the farm during the weekdays. When uh, and, I, and I made this list of about 20 things when, 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 the, when the lines are shorter. <clears throat> Use it as an excuse to bond with your mother-in-law. Use it as an excuse to get away from your mother-in-law. <laughs> use, use it as a date night. Use it as whatever you want to. <clears throat> and I did a fill in the blank. And, uh, and, 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 and you know, people have been coming out. The weekday traffic has been very, very good. And I, I, I would say um, one of the things in, in terms of agricultural tourism and, and, and agriculture, this has in part has been sort of devastating with, with weddings and, you know, the educational programs and uh, uh, some of the other stuff. But on the other hand, um, we've pivoted. And where have we gone? Well, we've gone in a whole lot of different directions and, and, uh, and, 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 and that's been really good. Uh, one of the other things, we've, we've got dig your own, well, it's, not, it's pick your own potatoes because that's something that's, unlike apples where people put them into their mouths and eat them, the people are very reticent to stick a potato in their mouth. So, so there's very little shrinkage there, but, uh, <laughs> at least so far. Um, you know, years ago, I, I, was, uh, I was invited to be on a panel at, 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 in Cambridge with the mayor and uh, Kathleen Merrigan, who was the deputy Se secretary of agriculture. And, um, and I said, and this was, of course, um, energy was a hot topic back then. And I said, you know, one of the things about food and food security is that um, we've seen what happens when we offshore our, our energy needs all over the world and what, what, the stranglehold other places have had on us. And I said, one of the things about food is we've got to think about the same thing. Number one, our food source is very, very good and very, very safe. I saw this uh, piece on uh, 60 Minutes or one of the news magazines about uh, stuff flowing in from Mexico. And, and there are residues of DDT and uh, still, and it's very hard for me to believe. And, um, and, and you kind of wonder what the future is going to be. And you think about global warming, although you wouldn't know that there's global warming today because it was, was, was pretty, pretty cool. The projections, you know, I started reading about this 20, 25 years ago, 
the wine growing regions are heading north in California, towards the Pacific Northwest. There's not enough water to support the, the vegetable growing in Southern California, ultimately, and they're moving into the southeast. And, and one of our one of, one of our friends and colleagues from from the from the area, Rich Bananos in North Carolina, the head of the Extension Service, and, and a lot of stuff's moving around. I saw a projection. One of my friends sent me a projection on how different things are moving north. The grain belts are moving north because the, the southerly parts of the great grain growing age, areas in the country aren't going to be able to do what they've done in the past. So, but um, we'll, we'll see where it all goes. Um, but back to agricultural tourism. I think we've got a real opportunity. These types of places are not just places of families to go. They're real economic drivers. The number of people that come here is just outrageous, even to me. And I watch it every day. And um, and watching these things happen, we, we just sort of wonder, okay, what's the future going to bring? And how can we get more people? And how can we in, enrich their, their experience out here? North Andover is very lucky. We've got a lot of very, very good people, as a lot of towns do. We've got a historical society that's being renovated, thanks to the efforts of a lot of people. We've got a lot of things out of Andover, which, of course, us in North Andover always refer to the fact this is where Andover really started. We had this witch hysteria in the 1690s, um, and, um, and, and uh, this, uh, one of my friends wrote a, wrote a play about it, teaching about, um, about uh, tolerance and, and understanding your neighbor and, 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 and you know, how, how true that rings these days, you know, respect for each other. And um, so in terms of some of these, some of these uh, ag tourism things, maybe there's a, there's a place for all of these things uh, to be incorporated locally and uh, you know in terms in terms of myself my Nikki Dan is sitting over there and my new general manager Dean Meese is sitting over there um, and um, hopefully step back a little bit you know I like working I'll be working until the day I die as a matter of fact somebody asked me the other day have you been here your whole life and I looked at him very With, 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 the, with the people who actually get things done downtown here. But, um, but with that, um, I, you know, I'm not going to go into the uh, multiple things that we do here because Mike, I tell think... Them, tell them how many people... One of the things we want to focus on yeah. is the visitors. Tell them how, how the families come here and how many people come here. Like, what are you anticipating the next month in terms of visitors? This is an example of why we think... You know, as Tico mentioned, ag tourism has a real opportunity for the economy. Tell them what you're anticipating. I can give you the example of a few years ago, America's Funniest uh, in the Boston media, and we had clickers. different restaurants and normally we have between 120 to 160 people having dinner by some of the most uh most uh, 
well-known restaurants in the metropolitan Boston, and, and, and Joe's been here for seven years, and I've never eaten so well, and all I have to do is walk two minutes in the home. It, it, it's, it's a, it's a win-win situation, and it's been uh, really, really good. Um, and uh, we've had a few. We've got um, Ledger from Salem coming this coming Wednesday. We're limited to, I think, 50 people in total, including staff, so it's cut down, and we've, we've kept it going. Um, and, and in hopes that next year, you know, we'll be back up to capacity, <clears throat> you know, providing everything works out all right. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of what are the things that would be of interest to everybody, but that, that pretty much sums everything up here. I don't want to so take too much time. Can, can I, let me just add a few things that Michael and I have been, oh, actually, Michael has a platform first. You want to do that now? Yeah, I'm sure that's Kiko to come over and uh, we're going to take the mic as well. Uh, this is all, this is really an economic driver. So when he mentions that there are thousands of people coming to the community, they wouldn't come otherwise. And Nick, and I've been here when I've seen people come from literally out of state. When I say out of state, I mean really away from, from the Merrimack Valley. Five, it's a drive vacation, it's a drive, drive ride. People from Boston, some of them, all that community here to come here and they enjoy the farm. And it's a great opportunity for us to promote our economic development diversity. And it's exactly what Kiko was talking about, and her, under her leadership, we'll continue to do greater and greater working in conjunction with the local economic development departments. And you want to—I love my mask. <laughs> so we want to recognize the uh, we want to recognize the economic development departments of North Hills over here. Give them a round of applause. And we want to recognize the two schools here, the Merrimack Valley and North of Boston, because they drive it every single day. They help them make. Our day is better in terms of our travel and tours and the valley. But that's what we want to do, and that's what this idea was about. And talking to Michael, uh, we've been able to discuss in detail. And one of the things that we've done here, we've come to visit, you know, these women dinners he talks about. Imagine getting the major Boston chefs to come here and cook outdoors under a tent on a farm. Who would think of that? But yet it happens. That's agritourism. And it happens. Unfortunately, too frequent, infrequently this year because of the COVID. But when you bring 150 people in and you see the Mercedes and the Jaguars and you know the SUVs parked outside, you know that people really care about getting out and finding some other opportunity. And then when you see kids coming during the day with their parents, and you see kids riding on the hay rides, you know, the educational programs, which have been limited out because of COVID, you see this opportunity here. So that's what agritourism is about. From our standpoint, we're going to continue to promote the Merrimack Valley and Chamber of Commerce. But we want to get from you and your rights. So I don't have where you have set up on it. Um, okay. But I think this is a great presentation. I always love being here. Michael, it's so good to see you. Uh, and we are very committed at North of Boston to promote all of our farms, all of our all of our businesses. And, and as Joe and as Keiko had said, this has been an especially difficult year. Um, the hospitality industry, that the lodging properties in particular. Uh, the restaurants, the farms, the museums, the tours, the performance arts venues. So we're very committed to uh, working with everyone. We're committed to the My Local campaign, My Local MA. We're doing a lot of great posts and we're driving traffic to all of your websites, to where your listings are on our website. Um, and uh, we're happy to promote anything that you have going on. Please keep in touch with us. Joe, thanks for having us out. It's nice to be out of the house. So thank you very much. I know the, um, you know, I think, like you mentioned, having, you know, diversity in your portfolio is so, like the 80s, you went from pretty much, you know, farm stand to pick your own, and now it's like we've seen you standing here, you know, weddings and venues, and it's such a trickle down effect. You know, now the hotel, think about how many hotel rooms you probably provided mm -hmm. just on weddings alone in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now that's, you know, recreating from the ground floor. And, you know, the other part is jobs. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Jobs and kids. How many kids have started working here when they were like 15 or 16 years old? Someone gave me the statistic, and it almost I almost fell over when they when they told me that um, uh, in, in the fall it, we have up to about 120 or 150 people working.
working here in a two week period. And someone said that is one of the top five non-governmental employers in North Andover. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. Really? Us? This is a farm? That many people? But, um, and and uh, these people come back year after year. And now I see them with their children. Now I see them with their grandchildren. It's, it, it's, it's, it's really, really nice. So hopefully that will continue for quite a few years. Does anyone have a question for our people or Michael? Yeah. Hi. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that the, um, you may know the average age of farmers is uh, 55. We need more people going into agriculture. Um, Starbridge School of Agriculture is very interested in spreading the word of their programs. They um, are willing to, um, to do enrollment um, with high schools. Also, um, my name is Arlene Lieberman. I'm with the Education Alliance. We've held um, an annual um, agricultural roundtable where we have Commissioner Rabeau and people from like Norfolk, Bristol, Essex, Aggie. And if anyone wants to get on our list, um, please give me your card. Um, we've also written about agriculture and education and university business, which is national. So if anybody has ideas, an article we've also written for Boston um, Business Journal that would be a great place to get the word out about uh, find my local. So if there's anything I can do to help around this, please. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be very much appreciated because I'll tell you, because this is not um, as highly agricultural as it used to be, it is extraordinarily difficult to find someone who has a background in agriculture to come work. Uh, in a property like this. We've been looking for, for some agricultural management for uh, several years now, and it, we've got some great people working here, but we need some extra help now. So anybody you can throw in our direction would be certainly more than uh, more than appreciated. You know, it's crazy because with our unemployment, um, Starbridge says they have like 20 people's, uh, 20 jobs waiting for each graduate, and they are hungry for students. So if you did do enrollment in high school, you put ideas, and I don't even think they charge the courses because they're trying to generate interest. Mm -hmm. Great, and thank you. Some, um, thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. We'll talk after for sure. Any other uh, comments or questions? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, some residential of Mass Farm You guys get to deal with the chefs, the hay and all that. I get to deal with the fire chiefs and the building inspectors and the State Department of Environmental Protection. There are a lot of barriers to agriculture. In many ways, it's very new. The weddings, the breweries, and things like that. And the laws that go along with them, uh, with agriculture, don't address them. So, Keiko mentioned the, the um, Agritourism Study Commission we're on. We're going to be looking at that. The chamber would be a natural uh, entity, and others in here as well. Help support some of the changes we really need to keep agriculture thriving and, and growing. Well. Yeah, just invite us. This is again. We started. You know, we have coffee with Michael every once in a while. We sit outside, and uh, you know, I think I'm in Vermont and New Hampshire, but nothing as beautiful as Massachusetts in the in the fall. I don't believe. But we started talking about it, and we started learning more about Michael in terms of how many people come here, who comes here. So there are weddings that are held here. You know, weddings indoors and outdoors. There are uh, you know farm groups. There are kids coming here. Uh, uh, but when did it? You know, times have changed. This is no longer just the farmers we do to grow food. This is now, I think, important because people today want to know where their food is coming from. And secondly, well, in order to keep a farm alive, keep them surviving, you know, this could be 300 housing units or more. But in order to keep a farm alive, keep open space, think of all the people that have been locked up in their homes or their apartments, uh, their offices, they haven't been able to get out. And now they come here, they see open space, they see grass. You know, they see farm animals, they see frogs, they pick their own. So this is important. So this is this grew up out of discussion with Michael about what the farm has become, how it's evolving. So absolutely, we look forward to uh, working with you in the whole that people recognize that times have changed. You know, times have changed. So think of the old hill village. You know, we're very actively involved in economic development. But as the end over not the end of the try to rebuild the old mill buildings, you know, those were factories, now they're residential units. Farms today are not only growing food, they're bringing people in. And when Michael talks about bringing in thousands of people, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I shudder when I think of what it's like when you see all these people waiting in line to decide a notice and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, you know, going back to something Brad brought up a little while ago, we went through a period where we, we couldn't use our barn because it, it didn't meet um, the, the strict 
strict code, so we had to go to the appeals board, and fortunately they found in our favor. But one of the things that was said at the appeals board is that if we held all of our agricultural uh, properties, and, and you know, these are, these are old properties, and of course, the safety paramount to all of us, certainly none of us wanted, want, wants anybody to be hurt or to put anybody in jeopardy. And I had a grandfather who was scarred for life because he was putting a fire in one of the uh, buildings over here years ago. But, um, but he said, and it was, it was a little bit scary, he said, if we held all of our farms to strict code, none of them would be in business. And it's true. And it's, it's uh, sometimes for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the lack of half an inch of uh, headroom in, in a building, or, 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 or we've been trying to get uh, use of our greenhouse for, for more than just, uh, just retail. It, and it, it's been tough, and we're working on it, but sometimes it's pretty lonely out there. And not just lonely, it gets expensive. Margins are shrunk for everybody, including farmers, and so it's kind of hard to to keep us uh, keep us going. And, and, and you know, you need a little wind in your sails every now and again. And fortunately, these people have helped the wind go back in, in our sails here, and, and we're making some progress. And hopefully, we'll be the other side of all this shortly. Brad, I, I wanted to mention one point. One of the things that I've always been concerned about is the fact that we're running the New Hampshire border, and it's so easy to go to New Hampshire and find less regulations, less opportunities um, for our prohibitions and so we want to make our Massachusetts economy as strong as possible so at least be equal to what other states allow don't be more excessive because what happens is that we see so many people jump on the border to say when the sales tax they jump on the border to go out to eat in fact at full scale dining uh, the function halls are open our function halls cannot be open you know and so you know we need to be aware of what the to be aware of what the regional impact is. Yeah, no, I literally know several farms who moved out of Massachusetts because of the cost of doing business and because they couldn't compete with neighboring uh, states because we are so small. So, and that's a point we make a lot of times on the you know, with legislators, we love to have your voice making the same as well. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you all again for coming to everyone else. Oh yeah, there's, there's a lot of extra and there are also bags and I don't want to see anything here when we're when everybody leaves. Wow. So what I would please encourage you to take anything and everything when you leave. That would be terrific. Well, thank you all. Thank you. I just want to say thank you again to Mike Smolak and Smolak Farms for hosting us today. I want to thank Kiko, uh, Matura, Arul for taking the time out to be here with us. Thank you.